Oh no. Ah! That's right, you filthy mudblood! You haven't read the books. So what? We're not reviewing the books, we're reviewing the movies. And I'm up to the fifth one. The books are good, you should read them. No, I don't want to be one of those losers who knows what's going to happen. You know what? Snape kills Dumbledore. Who's Snape? Did you ever make anything happen? Anything you couldn't explain? You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? When I first saw The Sorcerer's Stone ten years ago, I thought it was a well-made and faithful adaptation of a good book. Looking at it again ten years later, well, let's just say the years haven't been kind to the boy who lived. The special effects are shockingly awful, and just plain bad. Like, I can't tell what's going on. Like, why is there a troll walking around, or whatever Hans Gruber is talking about? Mr. Potter. Talk to me! Where are my detonators? Also, the acting. Well, white moves first, and then we play. No, Ron, no! What is it? He's going to sacrifice himself. No, you can't! Now, we're not blaming the kids. In most cases, it was their first job, and we know they turned into good actors. We're blaming the director, Chris Columbus, who brought nothing to the table, set flat angles to great set pieces. Like Wizard's Chess. Why didn't he just jump off? Yeah, Wizard Chess doesn't even look that hard. You wanna try something difficult? Try playing against the computer on my Macintosh. If that's Wizard's Chess, then Wizard's Monopoly is definitely Quidditch. Because it goes on, and on, with no end in sight. And it sucks. Yeah, I don't even see what the point of Quidditch is anyway. There's no real drama in it. Gryffindor is at worst tied with Slytherin, and it takes Harry a good 10 minutes to realize that he's even playing. The entire match is rendered useless because all you really have to do is capture the golden golf ball with wings. It's like a Disney sports movie. This is Air Bud all over again. Yeah, that's really the problem here. Everything gets tied up in a nice, neat little bow. Three 11 year olds are faced with certain mortality and come out on top. All right there, Ron. All right. You? All right. Hermione? Never better. Bullshit. And since everything works out for Harry, I'm sure Gryffindor is going to win the House Cup. The house cup. God damn it, see what I mean? Believe it or not, this used to be an 8 out of 10 when it was first released. Now it's little to a 6. I didn't grow up with these movies, and seeing them for the first time did not do them justice. 4 out of 10. Do not pass go, Quidditch. Go directly to jail. The chamber of secrets has indeed been opened. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, this movie is too long. It's the longest of the series, in fact. It's like a page-by-page -page adaptation of the book, which is a bad thing because Chris Columbus doesn't know what he's doing. Listen, the effects and the actors are better in this one, but the movie still moves at a snail's pace and... Quidditch. Yeah, you know, all these hints are dropped and you can tell that everything's gonna tie together in a nice little bow. Again. If this movie worked out any better for these kids, they'd probably have to get a talking dog in a mystery van. Yeah, well, thankfully, this is the last time Rowling wrote this story like a Saturday morning cartoon. There's no point for the Quidditch scenes, no point for the classroom scenes, and there's definitely no point for the stupid spider scene. I mean, what was the point of sending us in there? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, you know, the new casting of this film was one for two. Jason Isaacs is perfect as Draco's father, Lucius, as he plays the same asshole from The Patriot. Stupid boy. My servant! However, Kenneth Branagh is completely miscast. Normally a great Shakespearean actor, he's just out of place in this film. It really should have been Hugh Grant, despite his most recent headshots. Now, the ending sequence with the Basilisk is pretty cool, and the whole subplot with the diary is nice, and plays a role later on. However, there's just too many things in this movie I don't care about. Take, for example, the broom scene. 
Those are Nimbus 2001s. How did you get those? A gift from Draco's father. What's the difference? It's not like Madden. They both fly. Yeah, and of course, the Disney bow strikes again. There's no Hogwarts without you, Hagrid. Ugh, I hope they all don't suck like this. Four out of ten. No, nah, they get better. Not this time. Five out of ten. Quidditch. Sirius Black is the reason the Potters are dead. And now he wants to finish what he started. Facto Patronum! Primero, muchas gracias por Afonso Patron por haciendo un película fantástica. Okay. Oh, I was uh, just thanking Alfonso Patron for making such a great liquor and a fantastic film. Cuaron. It's Alfonso Cuaron, you idiot. Oh, well, then I just like to drink. Oh, boy. All right, this is a much better film. It has a grittier approach, which makes the magical stuff, dare I say, more magical. Christ, man. Listen, besides this film being better, it boasts a creepier tone with the likes of the Ring Wraiths. Dementors. Ring rates are from Lord of the Rings. They're two different movies. Oh, I had no idea. Alfonso got better performances out of all the child actors. Well, minus one scene. He was their friend. And he betrayed them. He was that friend! You could have asked for another take there, Quaron. Another shot? Don't mind if I do. Now, put that down. We have four more movies to watch. Jesus! Well, as far as the new edition of adult actors are concerned, uh, Professor Lupin is played by David Thewlis, who is a new dark arts teacher. He's a nice addition to the cast, minus the pedophilic tendencies. Wait, what? What do you mean? Well... That would have been remarkable. Here, eat this. You'll feel better. For today. Yes, sit down. Here, eat this. It helps. It really helps. He does that the entire movie. That doesn't make him a pedophile. Well, how do you explain the white unmarked broomstick he drives around with tinted windows? Give me that. <clears throat> Gary Oldman, who plays Sirius Black in this film, is wonderful. And what is funny is that Gary Oldman, to this generation, is only known as Sirius Black and Commissioner Gordon. Whereas our generation knows him as this. Get off my plane. And old. Everyone! You're a monster, Zork. I know. The time travel works well in this film. And there's no paradoxes in the end, which means everything works out nicely. It's like Hermione's carrying around Bill and Ted's excellent necklace. Yeah, the ending of this film really does work. And for the first time, everything doesn't tie together in a nice little bow. Wormtail gets away, Sirius, while freed, is not cleared of his crimes and has to go into hiding, which leaves Harry unhappy. Which makes me happy. 8 out of 10. You know what makes me happy? More of this. 7 out of 10. You have a problem. You're my problem. In this one, Brendan Gleeson takes our main character under his wing to protect him from a very much alive Voldemort played by Ray Fiennes. Flor Delacour is played by Clements Posey, who makes an appearance as a young filmmaker making films about midgets. Nope. Nope, that's not Goblet of Fire, that's In Bruges, which has no Harry Potter and zero magic. Aha! How do you explain this? I didn't mean to be taking the piss out of it being a fairy tale place. It is a fairy tale place. It really is. Hmm. It's just a shame it's in Belgium, really, but... Our story begins with the Quidditch World Cup, which thankfully has no Quidditch and no Vuvuzelas. <laughs> the Triwizard Tournament takes up most of this film, as each participating school is allowed one representative chosen by the Goblet of Fire. Except this time, there's a fourth, and guess who it is? Harry Potter! Harry! I protest! Harry, you put your name in the Goblet of Fire! No, sir! You asked one of the oldest students to do it for you? No, sir. 
You're absolutely sure. Jesus, he's 14. Bad Dumbledore. That's someone like you. Other awkward moments include the Yule Ball, which is about as exciting as my eighth grade formal. Place your right hand on my waist. What? And the direction of Mike Newell. <laughs> Hello, father. You are no son of mine. Okay, it's not that bad. I'm just saying it's not as good as Quaron. Speaking of hitting the bottle, Brendan Gleeson does it quite a lot in this film. You got some sort of problem? No, 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 dude, you're awesome in this. Speaking of awesome, Lord Voldemort is played by a featureless Ray Fiennes, who's very good in this, but you can tell doesn't quite have a hold in the character yet. Yeah, while well, he can be very menacing, most of the time he's being cradled in Wormtail's arms, which pretty much makes him an inanimate object. You're an inanimate f***ing object! Who bleeped that out? Must have been Dumbledore. The film's climax is thrilling, and particularly striking as it contains the first major death of the series. And death's a good thing, especially when it happens to this guy. Ah, oh, come on, it's not funny. A father loses his son. Okay, maybe it is funny. This is another solid entry, but not as good as Azkaban. 7 out of 10. 6 out of 10, but I'm willing to award a full point for the death of Cedric. You know he sparkles in the moonlight? It's sunlight. Shut up. 